All right. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, about 8.30 p.m. here in Chicago on November 17th. My name is Elvin, also known as Epoxy, and today we are casting the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks A-Team, uh, Scarlet Hawks Overwatch A-Team, as they take on Carnegie Mellon University uh, for the TESPA Overwatch Collegiate Championship. Um, normally, uh, we do a 7 p.m. caps as well, but today... Uh, just a couple of issues, so we are just going to be doing this one evening cast for today. Uh, map 1 will be in Nepal, though, and teams are getting set up in the uh, map lobby. But until then, let's just do a quick check on how the Hawks are doing. Um, from the check, I think the Hawks are currently 8 and 4. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, so right on the upper half of uh, of the bracket, so they're not doing too bad themselves. Uh, let's take a quick look at who's going to be on the roster for the A team. All right, so we've got on the A team Kane, Liu, Ryan Lusk, Matthew Gombar, Isaac Vong fit as the tank lineup. Sarah Copel, Nick Zhang, Milton Parr, Hans Chung as the support, and then Ethan Fox, Kevin Corey, Bill Shu, and Benny Vasquez as the DPS damage lineup. And then uh, this year they're going to be led by uh, Pavan Sisla and Asim Haider as their coaches. And then uh, in terms of captains, we have Milton and Isaac. Uh, uh, let's see if. Their team's still in the lobby. Looks like they're still getting set up. So, uh, again, map one's going to be Nepal, but we'll switch over to it uh, once the games get started. I'll just keep going through the bios. Um, with Matt, he's going to be a second-year electrical engineer uh, playing for the IIT men's soccer team from Elburn, Illinois. Isaac Vongfit, Shockwave Q, also electrical engineering second year from Collierville, Tennessee. Um and enjoys bubble tea and another fun fact is that he apparently lives inside the arena uh inside our esports arena um and then brief cool k first year biomedical engineering uh alchemisto fourth year chemical engineering from chicago ethan fox mechanical engineering third year um part of greek life from st charles likes doomfist kevin corey bladed banana from batesville architecture major third year Benny, second year computer science, uh, Genji main. Bill Shu, computer information systems, first year. Home Medic Milton, fourth year computer science. It's his third year, I believe, leading actually to Overwatch A team uh, from Chicago, Illinois. Sarah Griffin, first year applied mathematics. Nick Sang, Daybreak, computer information systems, first year. Hans Chung, first year chemical engineering. And I think that's it. Cool. All right, uh, let me go back to the spectate. Uh, cool, got everything set up, I think. So now I can get myself into the game. It's going to be IIT there on the left side. So I've got all of my panels lined up. Again, map one, Nepal, so control. It's going to be a... It's gonna be a, a winner no matter what at the end of this first map. I'm gonna have to see what happens uh, in terms of who, what heroes they're going to pick. Are we gonna be seeing double barrier again? I don't know if there's been a recent patch. I know that a lot of the players have been discussing how that uh, might be changing the meta up a bit. Custom game settings updated. Here's the. <laughs> That's uh. <laughs> Alrighty, game's gonna get started. IIT making their way now onto the point, and we are gonna be seeing the double barrier there, but uh, CMU changing things up a little bit on their own with the Reinhardt 
Both teams coming into the point to pretty much at the same angle. Maywall actually going to be starting things off to isolate a couple of members, but not going to extend all the way, so they're still going to be able to bend through. No kills coming across yet. Celeste on that Reaper trying to see if he can bust through the shields. It's going to be taking that Reinhardt shield pretty low, but he is going to be taken out by the Arisa eventually. Going to likely be the first point here, falling in favor. Uh... Nope, IIT still trying to hold around where they can, looping themselves around, doing a lot of team displacement, but CMU slowly getting the picks that they need and going with the team wipe are going to have them cap point one here. IIT now making their way back, Gumby's here is going to be on the Sigma with about two thirds of his ult charged up there. It's gonna absorb that Moira ball right then and there. All members out there, but that's going to be a Baptiste ult available to bust right through the shields, and it's going to be isolated instantly by the May, taking out both of the tanks for IIT, going to make them go all the way back to spawn, continuing to waste down that timer as now about 35% of the point is capped. IIT not willing to go past the point while their tanks are not available. Gumby's with his ult going to be available likely for this fight. Nice Maywall to isolate, but it's going to be May able to stop getting frozen up. Beat up by the rock, but uh, the May ult going to be used here. And I don't know if IIT is going to be able to fight through this one. Celeste able to get the knock up onto May before he's frozen. But any more picks that we're going to be seeing, it's going to be... Him going right through to the back line. Any members falling as of yet. Gumby's taking out the Orisa ult and getting a pick onto the Moira. But the Reaper from CMU showing up big here. Getting kills that he needs on the IIT's tank line once again. May going for a little bit of a solo cap there with a nice water. But uh, she's going to eventually fall to CMU's May with a icicle to the face, unfortunately. 85% IIT's got chance for one more play. Haven't really seen too much in terms of uh, IIT being able to utilize the, the their uh, their damage source. Finally going to try to see what they can do to break through that DPS. But oh my lord. CMU instantly collapses on that with a nice Reinhardt ult to get almost all of IIT's members straight down. It's going to be Bladed Banana onto that May, trying to see what she can do, but she's going to be instantly instigated. She's going to try to do what she can with her ult, but uh, no members falling yet. And overtime winding down, that's going to be objective secured. CMU putting themselves onto the map early here, 1-0. Yeah, I mean, uh, not too much to comment. I think it's just really IT having a hard time trying to dictate the pace of the fights. A lot of members getting picked out, wasting down the timer, seeing you being pretty efficient in terms of where to uh, where to pick up uh, kills uh, that they can spot out. You know, tanks from IIT having a hard time to establish themselves and then getting split off from the team and insta by uh by May waiting down below at that uh, second floor. It's going to be the Gumbies though, trying to do a little bit of recon, May likely going to be trying to see if he can find some picks. And uh, what's this? This is also another uh, Wrecking Ball versus Wrecking Ball matchup here. It's going to be the Gumbies falling down. Ha ha, my camera. He's gonna finally fall though. Reaper though here to follow up with it. He's gonna go for the start with the picks where he can first. He's gonna be able to get onto the Junkrat Celeste. Starting things off with going to be able to definitely help against a junk right here for point cap. But IIT setting themselves onto the point here. It's going to be actually stopped by a Doomfist, I think, from playing from behind, and that's going to be a purple on a nade. It's going to be the point uh started off from CMU. Gumby's trying to see what he can do on the point, but he's kind of in a stuck between a rock and a hard place, honestly. Uh Celeste Though, still able to pump out the numbers. Can he break through these shields? He's going to need a little bit more help, I think. He's going to be fighting the Ana. No kills yet, but the McCree barely holds on and is able to finally get the pick. Gumby's going to be trying to still do what he can, but not really nice knockup from Lucio. Barely finish him off. It's going to be IIT making a cap for himself. The Junkrat finally falling down here. It's going to be a nice trap there to hold him in place, but IIT still holding on to here and this is actually 
helping delay it to the point that they can get themselves back onto the point. Gumby's going for an ult of his own, likely just trying to see if he can stop uh, them from ca capping. But the McCree Deadeye, Bladed Banana, showing up here now. IoT damage is where it needs to be for this round. Did Reaper and McCree getting really nice picks so far? So, you know, normally a lot of these games I just watch Gumby's and then that's probably where all of the action will be, but I'm going to have to keep my eyes closer. Reaper with an ult available. Purple Nade's going to be deteriorating. CMU now moving in to look for a point cap. Does Reaper have a possible flank? They are going to see him, though. How are they going to get that fight started off? Hugo going to be getting to pick onto the Lucio. Reaper going to be going in on his own. He's going to be able to take down at least two members pretty low. But that's going to be a junk rat tire there to start things off. Going to be finishing off Home Medic and Shockwave. And that's going to be the cap going back here for in favor of uh, CMU. 44%. Dead even, actually, when they went for the back went back at the cap. Support though from IIT with their ults available. Could be able Daybreak could break that to get themselves situated onto the point early. Nice little bit of a speed boost. Gumby's though, with a pick, I think he almost was basically able to get the kill onto that Roadhog. Orisa going to try to see what she can do. Doesn't look like IIT wants to approach from this angle. They are going to commit for it with that Lucio ult. Can they get themselves onto here with any displacement? No members falling yet. It is going to be Hugo taking out the Orisa though. Actually, Daybreak trying to do what he can. Gumby's getting a flash stun. And this is actually going to be home medic here. With her ult trying to see what she can do to keep the members healthy. You can't afford to lose this point, I think, with it being too low. With uh, the point already at 86%. It's going to be a sleep from the Ana that's going to be able to get things going, but it's going to be the Gumby's going to be likely falling eventually. No, that's going to be Gumby's with his ult. Does the Ana have an ult of her own? No, she's already gone from the game. So it's going to be Gumby's having to use the ult in order to try to do what he can to save the point. IIT's going to ha definitely have to work uphill. A nice grab there to be able to get to the junk rack. Good pick there from the Hawks. Um... And, um, yeah, looking like they can set themselves up another pick. Shockwave and Gumby's. That synergy with the, uh, with the, with the grab, mini grab, and with the hook doing work for the Hawks. They're going to be helping delay things. And again, at 97% cap here with CMU, they cannot afford, uh, to really lose this point. Decent amount of ults building up here. CMU grouping themselves all the way around here to this point, just trying to get themselves. IIT, though, getting to read on it, situating themselves all the way back on the point. It's going to be the Orisa ult to start things off. Is it going to be able to get any picks to start off? It's going to be looping itself all the way around. It's going to be capturing Home Medic. Home Medic without an ult, though. McCree with his Deadeye available is going to be actually able to get the Oni Yed King. On for it, and we'll keep our eyes on him. It's going to be McCree versus McCree, but no, the Ana is there to help things out. It's going to, looking like Gumby's is going to be stuck here. Going to try to cap it to do what he can. No, unfortunately unable to touch the point. That's going to be Carnegie Mellon taking map one here today. I think IIT not having to read on where that junk rat tire was for that last point. And then, you know, just the lack of the healing. Yeah, this was a very nice play there. IIT desperate to be able to touch the point. Not worry of the, uh, of that Reinhardt Shatter available. Uh, ends up, uh, taking the shorter end of the stick there. This is going to be now in IIT's decision in terms of deciding where they're going to be wanting to choose the next map as the losing team. Uh, however, we've seen the reverse sweeps happen before. Maybe IIT will... Uh, I think they will likely be choosing King's Row if I had to guess. I've seen that been pretty consistent, but... Uh, Nepal, I haven't really seen too much of their performance, so maybe, you know, just to, due to a new map, they weren't as comfortable on it for some, uh, as a potential reason, but, um, no, it looks like they're going to be hovering in Dumbani, as a matter of fact. Uh, interesting. And we'll keep our eyes on, uh, any of the roster switches 
going to be seeing a couple come across, I think. Uh, we're going to be seeing uh, Alchemisto being switched with Home Medic here. Um, so Home Medic known for his Ana. And then Alchemisto, I think iot has been trying out him as a new support. So let's take a quick check back at our spectate lobby. Again, Carnegie Mellon with the uh, uh, starting things off 1 and 0. Oh. And IIT selecting Numbani as uh, point 0.2. Where is it? Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Numbani. Ta da! Alright. Um, yeah, no, Carnegie takes it uh, at a 2 and 0 oh win for themselves. Yep, and then uh, I think we're good. Both teams still deciding who they want to be uh, selecting for which side. And I think I saw... That new that uh CMU is going to be electing to go attack first. So uh, let's get ourselves back onto here. Change things up. It's going to be IIT defending here first, and Carnegie will be on the offensive. Well, we saw them. We saw IIT the double barrier not actually able to work out for them in the map one. So Gumby's trying to see what he could do with the wrecking ball, but. Um, yeah, didn't really see, not too much to comment on his performance, I think, this, this game. We wasn't really able to see, uh, like, any, any environmental kills. Not too much. Lucio had a close one under Orisa, uh, from CMU, but she was able to just cling on to the edge. Um. And again, um... Uh, for this fall season, this doesn't necessarily, you know, these losses don't necessarily mean that they are out of any kind of tournament sense. It's more of uh, these performances do uh, impact their seeding, their their rankings in order to be able to participate for the Spring Collegiate Championship. So this, every win still does matter. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to try out new things in order to know what they can improve on. Going to be a bladed banana on that uh, bastion, but against the Genji, could see some interesting counterplay. Perhaps he's going to be looking for a flank of his own. Going to be actually going in right into the tracer. I don't know. Oh wait, no, that's actually their tracer. My fault. Uh, confused my colors. Blade banana with a little bit of repositioning here. IIT all over the map in this case so they're gonna just try to have to make sure that they keep their calls consistent to spot out any members of cmu uh gumby's still getting a pick onto hugo and genji from behind just trying to see whatever uh he can do but he's gonna run right into a roadhog hook instantly and blade of banana using that legos to uh great efficiency pelting them uh maybe as a meme if you aimed at their feet with the Lego, it would do, it would do, uh, critical damage. That's, that's how it should work. Cause, uh, I definitely relate to the pain of stepping on Legos as a kid, uh, in my playroom. Looking like IIT, uh, excuse me, CMU gonna be going for a little bit of a different comp. We're gonna be actually seeing Hugo on that Bastion. IIT, CMU diving there for that, for, uh, those members. But can they break through the Mortality Field? Keeping them barely alive. Copel trying to do what he can. Does he have the healing coming through? No, it's going to be finally Hachiyuki taking charge. But, a nice rest there from Copel. Gonna be keeping things going. Uh, ooh, man. Hashi is, uh, who would have thought that the Mercy would have been such a problem for a Bastion, but almost able to take him out again, but a much more exciting, uh, map here now with IIT taking, uh, able to hold on in this map a little bit better than we saw against Nepal. So hoping it maybe it's just a fluke, but... Uh, as long as the Mercy healing is there, they could be okay. Hugo, though, I think, shooting a couple shots. He's gonna have vision with his 
seek an arrow, but keep our eyes out on how they're going to fight through this. That's going to be a tons of damage. Uh, Mystics going to be finally able to take it out. And Hugo, the whole time, still trying to see what he picks he can go for. Fox, though, on that Pharah, helping out, taking out down that backline. He's got the ult available. He's going to be taking out the Mercy. Three kills now to his name. That's going to be a Diva respawning. Missing the first shot is that's going to be four kills to his name. He's going to be on fire for sure. And that's going to be giving enough time for Bladed Banana. I think he had a res from Copal there, so he's going to be just fine. Doesn't even have to walk back from base to get himself all the way back up. And the game shall go on. Oh my god, they even have the stupid Lego fire emoji. That's uh, not emoji, the, uh, the block. <laughs> 60 seconds now left on the clock. Thank you, announcer. And that's going to be Bastion with his old Fox with his old IIT. Have a lot of tools here. They need to CMU, I think, to get themselves started. Has to try to go for that one off pick. IIT's playing as a unit here. It's going to be the Hanzo ult not landing as of yet, but that damage is going to be starting to take out that Winston so they don't have to die. But Mercy, what are you doing there? It's going to be having her placed out. Five player kill streak. Fox in a nice little 1v1. Just going to be delaying the D.Va at this point. Good delays there. That's going to have the D.Va. Ooh, wait, hold on. All right, well, super delay. <laughs> All right. So delay to the point that I think she's going to be in overtime if she has to have a chance of even getting back onto the point. Really, IIT's only tool to be able, uh, excuse me, CMU's only tool to get in is going to be that Winston. Oni, D-King, what can you do? He's got the ult available. Can they get the pink before? Nope, he's going to start things off. He's going to be instantly shredded, though, by that Bastion. Bladed Banana, going to try to do what he can. Uh, no tanks available yet. No, that's going to be the Diva Nuke. That's going to be followed up by the Pharah Bomb. Oh, man, that's a lot of picks there for CMU. Fox trying to do what he can. Overtime now for, the, for IIT. Fox not able to hold on. Gumby's going to be the last man standing, and... Well played from CMU to hold on to the last second there, but I think that's going to be starting the caps. Only uh, Shockwave here, going to try to see what he can do to hold them back, but the Hanzo ult probably going to slow things down just a bit. He's going to try to delay where he can. That's going to be a very low Hanzo. IIT still wanting to hold on to try to fight, to do, fight for this point. But the tanks are now down. Fox only available. Five men. No, I think they were going to be able to go for the cap. So CMU is still holding on. Fox now kind of in a tough spot. He doesn't want to get picked out for sure. Can he hold on? <laughs> Baptiste trying to see what he can do uh, to lob the grenades all the way around. She's going to zoom her way around the point. And game now with CMU behind the wheel, literally. Going to be taking the uh, cart here. Going to be interesting to see where IIT wants to be making a stand. Shockwave on the Orisa. Uh, still looking like they're going for the same comps. The hook grab not able to work out in conjunction. That's going to be two crucial picks there gone. Likely, CMU going to be able to push this offensive all the way. Likely going to be seeing the second point as well. That's going to be Alchemisto isolated here. Gumby's going to be just preliminary here. Could he maybe just go for the one-off pick? Looking for that hero play. I think CMU has to read on it though. They're not going to be able to stop this point. Just a bit of a delay there, but barely two seconds, honestly, if anything. Uh, and Fox, unfortunately, not able to get back to point, and Copal Falls as well. And these kind of delayed, these delayed deaths are just going to f let allow CMU to push the cart and take the fight where they want to. IIT is going to have to be in the backseat for sure. Um, such a different change of pace from what we saw from their point one, though. Gumby's putting a quick stop. Putting a stop to the bleeding with a little bit of a with a nice pick there. Hanzo ult. Not gonna be finding anything yet. But that's going to be the diva ult. Not gonna be it is gonna be actually getting couple. She tried to fly out to follow up with the members, but no. That's a lot of members here falling. Bladed Banana trying to do what he can. But he's going to fall down eventually too. And IIT can't really sustain themselves here. He's actually going to be able to get the pick onto the Mercy. But now it's only going to be Gumby's available. He's going to have the Moira Ball to help heal him up a little bit. Trying to see what they can do on that Hanzo. He's going to be taken solo. Able to finally take him out. But at the cost of falling to the Diva. Shockwave galumping his way to avenge his fallen tank. 
But uh, that's all we're going to see. So IIT makes a stop with the cart now at 65, 66 meters to the... Uh, going to have it reset a little bit, but not too many ults available for IIT. Actually, Orisa has their ult, but that's pretty much the only tool that's going to be coming up for CMU. IIT, though... Actually, I take it back. Bladed Banana with his ult coming up could see a couple of shots. Does he? He's going to need the angle. He's going to make sure that he requires his team to coordinate with him. No, this is a not a double barrier cop. Ooh, nice pick on Noombat there. But Ana's going to Hachiyiki there to help out for his fellow support. It's going to be support versus support. That's going to be a sleepy team. Uh, Diva getting grabbed. Not... Diva ult looking like it only got the Moira. Haven't we seen Copal get like blasted by global ultimates set two times now? We saw it junk wrap point one in Nepal. Now we're seeing it here in uh It's okay though. 30 seconds left here on the point. IIT with five ults at their disposal. So going to be six with Alchemisto versus uh three ults for uh CMU. Are we going to see them steamroll through the point? I think they get themselves started. They're going to need to look for picks. It's going to be sleeped instantly. Nice pick there from Hachiyiki. It's going to be taking out one of the tools that they're going to need. Hot time from the McCree. Hugo not going to be able to find anything yet. Can they break through that barrier? No. They can't break through that barrier. And that's going to be two dead eyes there from Hugo. IIT unable to coordinate their ults together, I think. And that's going to be the point falling. Team kill, in fact, uh, to let CMU take the win here uh, for this first half. IIT's got their work cut out for them now, for sure, in a must-win situation. In order, and, and must-win being, uh, they've got to take the, they've got to take the payload all the way across. So we'll have to see if they can do it. Yeah, I think, I think IIT just panics in those last-minute plays, maybe. It could be just trying to do too many hero plays in terms of uh, like looking for that one isolation ult. I think Farah was looking for the flank, but she didn't have to angle. I think that was like a uh, like a level, like a, like a ground-level ult. Not having any aerial advantage at all uh, got her to be insta-slept also. Maybe maybe calling out the wrong focus or or what, but um, we'll have to see. Could just be CMU showing off the prowess, and uh, might be the better might be the better team for this uh, matchup today. But the Hawks, resilient as always, going to uh, look like they're opting for the same comp. Interestingly, though, we're going to be seeing uh, pretty much a mirror comp. If anything, uh, it's actually going to be. The uh, double barrier there for CMU with Hugo, but it's going to be Gumby's and Shockwave. Uh, that synergy again. You know, wishful thinking. Is he going to be able to grab that Bastion? Uh, but with with two barriers in mind, I don't think you can. So we'll have to keep our eyes on it. It's going to be Farah v Farah. Nice pick there. Uh, let's get things started. I, they're going to be resituating themselves. They see that that Bastion's not in place. Do they want to fall to the point? They know that they're setting up now on that bottom corner. We're all eyes now onto this Farrah to see what she can do. It's going to be no members displaced down here. But that's going to be Gumby starting things off with a cap. That's going to be a third of a cap going to be taken to start things off. And they're not here to contest as of yet. Gumby's trying to look for this pick. IIT is going to find. They're going to finally fall down here to try to match. It's going to be Gumby's looking for a one v three, one v one of his own. But that Orisa damage is going to be doing a decent amount of chunking of damage, and he's on fire. It's going to be taken pretty low, but their enemy Bastion. It's going to be trying to get see what he can do on the turret mode. Doesn't have to help, and he's going to be in his own turret mode to do what he can. Going to be blasted to smithereens by Shockwave Q. Going to be resurrected, though, from Hachiyiki. Bladed B Banana trying to do what he can. It's going to be finally falling down to sentry mode uh, from the Orisa. Farado here trying to come back to it. It's going to be Farrow v. Farrow not able to land any rockets as of yet. 
IIT might be on to the retreat here. They're still going to look for it. He's still trying to go for the pick. But not able to help out any other members could be dangerous for them. Alchemisto trying to do what he can with Gumby's with his ult. Could be trying to get the Mercy out of position. But the Mortality Field is able to keep them just alive. And unfortunately, uh, not able to get the picks that they needed. Numbai coming in clutch there with that Mortality Field. A little bit of a pharmacy matchup here. No picks as of yet. <laughs> Looking like IIT still going, still with a decent amount of time, but now CMU in a pretty good positioning. So it's going to be actually the Gumby's going for the long con here. <laughs> Look at this guy. Holy cow. <laughs> I don't even think they had to read on him. No, I take it back. Hachiyiki does have it. Oh my lord. He misses. The, I think he missed the shot. He misses the shot, but he gets to pick on the Mercy. So it's going to be. Him following up there, and uh, likely going to be just trying to spawn camp Hachiiki if he can. No healers still available. Could be dangerous. Jesus. Jesus. Okay. I'm. I'm. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> All right. IIT Gumby's playing the hero play. Hold on a second, and they're able to get the cap. All right. So. Gumby's with the uh, Mission Impossible there. Able to get the picks. Mortality Field though is up. It's going to be keeping it up. And just like uh, bird duck hunting, whatever you want to call it. Barrier blocking the Roadhog hook. Hugo making a strong stand here. He's going to go into the tank mode. Any picks yet? Barrier only available here for Shockwave. Gumby's is the only one that's going to be having the hook. Mortality Field still holding on. It's actually going to be Bladed Banana. Using his mortality field's advantage from Alchemisto to hold on to here. He's going to be setting himself up right here. That's awkward angle here. Sigma going to be absorbing all of the shots. But Fox is returning the favor. And Mystics returns the favor. All of these trades. A lot of action happening here for this point too. And at this point just a formality for the Mercy to fall. She's wanted to just delay her as much as they can. Hachiiki going to finally fall. IIT likely going to be able to make themselves across this point too. With about two minutes. Well now going to be four minutes once that adds on. But a couple members hovering here. Looking like they're going to be conceding the point I think. There it goes. So three and a half minutes. Fox getting a couple picks of her own. On that Farah, Gumby's again, Mission Impossible. Trying to find the picks that he can for the team. They know they got the read on him though. So he's gonna have to instantly retreat. Keeping our eyes on that though. Ana sleep is deadly, apparently, from uh, IIT. So as long as that barrier is up for Blade Banana, he's going to be able to clear the path. Hugo now, though, on that McCree, going to try to see what he can do. Does he have the angle? He's going to be tracked, though, from... Uh, he's going to be tracked by the Farah, but who's tracking... The rest of the team. It's going to be a lot of members there falling. Copal trying to do what she can to heal up. That's going to be a purple Roadhog. In that new skin, might I add. Which I also, might I add, got today from doing the uh, event. So, fun times. That's two event skins. Bastion Lego skin is also an event skin. Nice. Uh... Gumby's going to try to go for the picks where he can. They're going to be matched by that Sigma all the way up here. And he's kind of in an awkward position. I don't think... I think they're going to try to collapse onto him. He's not going to be able to get anything with that hook. It's going to be starting it off Sigma without his... Going to be using his ult to try to hold off the members. But no kills coming across yet. No Shockwave going to be falling. And Mystic's finding two kills. Gumby's going to be left isolated here. It's the last man standing. Gonna be finally taken down. Fox gonna have to retreat all the way with Copal. And I think CMU's strategy is they're they're realizing that the Gumbies is being too uh forward, like too progressive, uh pushing up too far, that they're saving him for last. So they're instead focusing on the uh rest of the members first before they address him. 
So it's really, if Gumby still tr plans to use this method, he has to be able to get the picks. And this could be one of them. He's going to be blocking Sigma's exit here. That's going to be one pick on a tank here. Hugo, though, keeping our eyes on him. He's got his ult available with an Orisa to help things out. That's going to be another pick. Blade of Banana. It's going to be the Doomfist now. Keep our eyes on that. It's going to be finding it onto Blade of Banana on that Doomfist. Fox, though, still on the Pharah with her ult available. How does they want to reply? It's going to be another tank falling down here. Gumby's going to be starting it where he can. Getting a stun from the McCree. A lot of fighting all over. IIT's not... Uh, CMU don't think that they're in sync here. But the Junkrat damage, I think, is able to clear him out. It's only uh, 60 seconds left at a point. That's going to be enough members falling. Mercy trying to do what she can. Formality at this point. 50... Five seconds left now for the Hawks to try to be able to win today's game in a must-win situation again. Uh, if they want to be able to take the win here tonight. 30 seconds left. Doomfist ult is available. Could be the thing that makes or breaks it. Gumby's going to be trying to look for a hook of his own. Could be trying to sync it up. But not too many options available. They're going to know that the Doomfist is behind. Keep our eyes on that. McCree is looking out for it. Roadhog going to be coming from all the way around. Trying to set up the barriers wherever that they can. No barriers breaking down. It's going to be a sleep though on Gumby's. They're going to be trying to class where he can. He's going to be purpled up. Doomfist trying to do what he can. Blade of Banana is going to need the miracle ult of anything if he can do it. It's not going to land on anybody. He's going to have to force himself to get out. It's going to finally fall here. Gumby's with his ult going to be finally falling. Shockwave here in overtime now. Not too much of a choice left. I think this could be it. Fox is trying to do what he can, but he's pushed all the way off the point in overtime. Hugo there is going to stop any members from extending. And CMU take the win tonight. Well played there from uh, Carnegie Mellon today. Uh, GG's coming up. There you go. How did he do this? Oh, oh lord. Both members knocked up. I don't know if that was what, what that was from necessarily, but... Only until the last second uh, did we see all of that stuff come across, but... Uh, yeah, that'll do it for today. So, getting ourselves back into the map lobby. It's going to be the Hawks taking it to a hard fought series there with a two and three performance at Numbani. However, not going to be enough as CMU closes it out tonight with the win under their belt, making it two and oh. And yeah, exciting game enough though, uh, for sure. Was definitely fun to see a little bit of, uh, I teach performance in some of these new maps. In the past, I think I've seen a lot of like uh, Nepal, um, a lot of Kings Row. So this this new stuff could be something that they've been trying out just to make sure that they can improve their map roster diversity. Because uh, mm, I don't think we know yet what the format for spring season will be as of yet. It could be the same as this. I'm not too sure. I'll have to check up with the coaches on that. But it's always good to make sure that you can play multiple maps competitively for sure. So, And multiple heroes competitively, as a matter of fact. So, Still looks like they've got a lot of things to work out, though, for the fall. Thanksgiving's coming up around the corner. And then, as you know it, I think uh, with winter break, that's going to be off-season for the Hawks to be able to try to fix any more mistakes to polish themselves up to be ready for the spring. As uh, season usually starts around, I think, mid-January, early February for most collegiate leagues. So we'll do our best to get make sure that we continue to get coverage of that. But for everyone watching today, uh, appreciate you stopping by. Hashtag IIT win. Unfortunately, not able to come across tonight. But again, still appreciate everyone give, coming by, giving your support, giving your views. Um, you know, we always appreciate this kind of community where we're able to build up the program in a student-centric uh, focus here. So that's going to be it for me today. Elvin Moy signing out. Thanks for watching, everyone.